Now, since I'm so excited about talking to you in regards of Photoshop filters, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite ones, and this is for packaging mockups. Great if you're a graphic designer. So I'm gonna to go to File and Open. In Chapter 7, Folder 6 is Game Case Design. And I'm gonna start with this one right here, Game Case Cover Art. Okay, typical uh, DVD case layout. We've got the front of the design, the spine, got my layers set up, and we're basically concerned with filling out the gray space. So I'm gonna come down here to the bottom. Okay, then I'm gonna start adding content to this design. So I'll go to File and Open, and I'm gonna open up Explosion 1. Okay, just like every other file, I'm gonna click and drag it all the way up, wait a second, drop it in, and obviously it's too small, so I want to zoom out like this so I have room to work. Then when I hit Command T, I have room to drag that corner way up high, then pull it back down. And I want the explosion to be right about there, kind of focusing on the logo. It goes high enough so it goes right underneath this bar, and that looks pretty good. Okay, we'll set it right there. I'll hit Return. Now I can zoom back in, close up the explosion. I don't need that anymore. And we're going to add a couple of characters. So file and open. Got a couple of figures here. So we've got the Grenadier Marine, one called Gunman. Um, I'm going to open up, let's say, let's try this one right here. Okay, Gunman 4. And with my move tool, I'm just gonna move that military figure up, drop it in. We'll put him right about there. Okay, kind of filling in this space right here. Close up Gunman 4, and I'm gonna to go to File and Open, and let's open up Ranger 2. You can pick whatever you want, but I'm gonna pick one that's up high and this guy who's down low, so we'll put him kind of tucked down here. Maybe Command T to transform him so their heads are about the same size right in there. And that looks good. So they kind of wrap around the words tutorial heroes. Good enough for me. Okay, what I also want is these figures to stand out because these two dark colors really blend together. So on the Ranger, to the right, I'm going to double click, maybe give him an outer glow but I don't want the glow to be black. So I'm gonna click here and set it to white. Remember that layer styles have blending modes and in multiply mode, white turns invisible because you did that on the line art file the first week of Photoshop. So I'm gonna set this to screen mode for bright colors. There we go. So get that guy to stand out. Option key for a copy, and I'll drag the effects to the other soldier right there so they stand out. And for the backdrop, I'm going to add a picture of the flag. So let me close out this other ranger, file and open, and we'll take this picture of the flag. Okay, all I want is the flag. So I'm going to take my quick selection tool, I don't need the flagpole. I'm just gonna click and drag through the colors of the flag right here. And let's go through these stripes. Okay, down into that red stripe, down here. If it jumps out into the rest of the photo, like into the trees, I can hold Option over here on the left and just scrape that part back off of the trees. I'm not trying to select the trees in the background, I just want a good chunk of the flag with my move tool. I'm gonna to move the flag up, drop it in, and I'm gonna make sure the flag is down right above the explosion, right in there. Okay, but that's kind of ridiculous because it covers up the entire explosion. So what I'm gonna do is use a blending mode. I'm gonna set it from normal to overlay. If I want to denote something like the spirit 
of America, the idea of America. I can drop the opacity down a little bit. Just get it kind of faded out in the background. And there's my quick layout for a video game. Okay, the problem is nobody can really judge that correctly because it's all flat. I would literally have to print this out, cut it out, fold it, put it in a DVD case, set up the DVD case on a table, photograph it, then cut out the DVD case, put it on a new background to then show my customer. It'd be a lot of work for very little feedback. Okay, so I don't wanna do that. I wanna do a mock-up of a product to show them in a more realistic manner what our game design would look like in a real DVD case. So what I do is I lay out my design, spine and all, and then I flatten out my image. Upper right corner of the layers panel, the pop-up menu, come all the way down to flatten the image. Now I'm gonna go to file and open and open up this one. I wanna show my game design on this actual DVD case photographed in perspective. Okay, the real thing. So here's what you do. On this file, you go to filter vanishing point. Okay, that's gonna bring you into this Photoshop vanishing point filter here. And the first button is your create plane tool. It's automatically selected for you. Okay, so what you're going to do is take this target and carefully click the four corners of the front of this DVD case. So I'm going to move it up the spine right here, right about there inside the white edge of the plastic. Click and let go. Then when I move my mouse, I get this stretcher bar, much like the polygon lasso tool. Just gonna move it across the top edge inside the white right there. Click and let go. Move it all the way down the edge, just inside the white plastic. Click and let go. And then move the final corner down the spine, right down to the edge of the white plastic. Click and let go. Okay, that's gonna trace in the proper perspective the front panel of this DVD case. But remember, we have the spine as well. These two walls connect like the corners of a room. So what I found with practicing with this, and this is really important, is you're going to go on the side anchor, not the corners. Okay, in order to add another wall, you're going to hold your command key right on this side. You're going to click and drag up and to the left. It's gonna come in at a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna drag it a little wider, like way out to here. Okay, I'll let go of my mouse, let go of my command key. Now we've established a second wall by using the command key or control key on a PC. But the angle doesn't match at the top and the bottom. Okay, so in order to rotate this, like swinging a door open and closed, you're gonna go on the side point again now hold your Option key or your Alt key to rotate the panel like that, like a door on a hinge. So I'll just rotate it down and to the left until the top and bottom angles kind of match my DVD case right down here and right up here, and that looks good. It's easier to rotate a long wall than a short one. That's why I dragged way out to here. And now I just need to make it Thin, like the spine so without touching the keyboard I take the side point again and I pull this back right up to the edge of the spine right there okay once I click OK in the upper right corner that basically tells Photoshop to remember what I have just traced it's stored in memory in that filter so now I can come back to my flat design. Okay, again, on my layers panel, I have flattened out the image. Command A for select all. Edit and copy all of my design. 
Now, when I come back to the DVD case, you are not gonna paste it into this photo. What you're gonna do is paste it back into the filter. So again, that is filter menu, vanishing point, one more time. You can see it has memorized those planes of perspective. So all I have to do on my keyboard is hit Command V to V paste, okay? Now when I click and drag it, as soon as it gets into the DVD case, it will snap to the perspective right there. See how it turns the corner on the spine? I can move that in, kind of line up my spine right there. Of course, this side didn't quite match, so I have a transform tool way over here on the left. Right above the eyedropper is a transform tool. I can pull this edge out like this, kind of squeeze it to just get it to fit that case right there. Let me bring that out a little bit and then bring this side back out. Let's kind of stretch it to fit the whole thing. Perfect. There we go. Now I have wrapped it inside the case. If I need it to be a little shorter, I can pull this down, pull this side down, and then pull the image back up. There we go, now I can pull this bottom edge down and just get it to fit as perfect as possible there. And there we go, I click OK. Now I have wrapped my DVD design onto an actual DVD case using the vanishing point filter. The only thing I'll let you know is this filter is kind of unforgiving. Okay, if it didn't work the first time, you have to close up the DVD case and then open it and do the filter again. You can't really go back and make minor tweaks. It just doesn't work well. So you kind of have to nail it the first time out. But with practice, you'll be able to do that. And that is how the vanishing point filter works. It's a lot more believable to look at this than to look at something flat like this. We don't see things on the shelf like that. We see things in real life. Okay, so that's a vanishing point filter for rectangular packaging design, like book covers, cereal boxes, shoe boxes, boxes in general. Um, doesn't work on cylinders or spheres or anything, but it works great for rectangular packaging. Okay, um, what you're going to do is save this file. Then in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you what you're going to do to show me what you have learned about the vanishing point filter and your own designs to have a little more fun with this in just a minute.